here are the top six things to do in Cebu. And without further ado, let's jump right into the video. If you haven't done so, make sure you like, share, subscribe, and ring that notification bell so that you can stay updated with the most amazing places that I get to visit on this earth. I'd love to have you join me along on this journey. Let's dive right into number one. And of course, that is swimming with the whale sharks at Oslo. But what I found interesting is that these whale sharks are obviously very, very sensitive creatures to its surroundings. So the induction that we received that was actually in multiple languages. So if you're Chinese or Korean, they have one in every single language. And of course, they have that in English too. I thought that was a very internationally accommodating sort of induction, if you like. Uh, and then after that, without further ado, we're jumping straight in there. The time that you spend with the whale shark is actually quite intimate because the whale sharks are very friendly. They swim right up to you. It is crazy. But what I didn't like about the experience is that they didn't give you any flippers. So you actually can't spend as much time underwater as you normally get. So it's really designed for beginners to enjoy just like the proximity to the whale shark. But for a slightly more advanced sort of swimmer and a diver that I am, I would have probably appreciated a little bit more time underwater. And I didn't know why, but maybe the water's a bit saltier. I would have loved to have spent more time underwater and get those dope ass shots. But I don't think we did too bad this time around. And when you're actually out there, the people, the guys that are on the boat that are there for you, they take the best photos for it. They work really hard to do it. And they're multilingual as well. So if they know you're Korean, they'll be like, Pashamba, let's do that again. Like all in Korean. So it's really nice. Not that most of you watch this video are Korean. But anyway, they're really keen on getting you that best shot. They'll give you multiple times to go underwater. There's actually no real time limit per se. You can stay there as long as you like because you're going to be absolutely smashed. And it's such a surreal experience because these whale sharks come right up to you. It. It's scary, friendly. It's really daunting at the same time. It won't be your fault if you accidentally kick the whale sharks here and there because you want to keep the distance, but they just come up to you. It is mental. And as you can see, it's not just one whale shark that you get to see. There's literally a dozen of them everywhere. There's, there's like 20 of them that surround you. So it's quite crazy. You feel scared, but after a while, you get comfortable and you get to enjoy, I guess, the presence around you as well. Yes, it is a really interesting place because they actually feed these whale sharks, which, you know, some people stand on the other side of the fence for that kind of stuff as well. But I think it's still good because it raises awareness that this kind of wildlife does exist and makes people that are able to go and visit it to want to protect nature and things like that. So I thought overall it was a great experience and I really appreciate the way they do it. Of course, there are other areas in the world where you can find whale sharks without having to feed them. But one thing is guaranteed is that if you actually go there, you will be able to see whale sharks. They are literally everywhere. And it is such a privilege to see them and I absolutely enjoyed my time there. And in Oslo, make sure you go have some grub around the corner. Your tourists will take you to a good place to have some food. It's just such good food and you can order anything you like there. And it's really well priced and it's very delicious and people are so friendly. The lunch at Oslo is something that I still remember to this day. It was very, 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 very delicious. And number two, we are heading out to Snorkel in Sumilo Island, which is nearby where you're gonna watch your whale shark. It is one of the most beautiful islands. The water is shallow and over there, it's teeming with aquatic life. We got to see so many different fish there. Nemo is literally everywhere and the water isn't that deep either. And the water was actually pretty cool if I don't remember. It is a very short boat ride from the main island over. There's little caves in there, which you can take photos, but I'm telling you, jump in the water because you're gonna see a whole new world in there. It's gonna be so much fun. And this is what Philippines is all about, is seeing all that aquatic wildlife. You'll see blue devils and you'll see clownfish. And you're gonna love seeing all the wildlife there. Again, I would have loved to have had some fins because that would give me a lot more mobility and duck dive a little bit more. But for beginners, just looking at it from the top, it's very easy to do so. It's not so dark because it's so shallow. There's a lot of sunlight hitting the water. So you should be able to see some really, really bright and awesome colors. Oh, and that batfish. I love batfish. Try find batfish when you're on holiday in Philippines. They're really cool. They're really beautiful. And we are heading to Tumalog Falls and there it is awesome. There's a ride that you get on from the top of the mountain all the way down. And by the time you get there, you are greeted by some crazy ass views you get me. And there is actually quite windy. There's a lot of wind blowing up from this massive fall that's actually pushing the air down and it is cold. That's when you'll find just tourists going in the water because Filipinos, they find it too cold to jump in the water. But that's why we took advantage of that sort of like vacancy. So we jumped right in and it was so refreshing. And make sure you take your time in Tumalog Falls to take as many photos and as many videos as possible and enjoy the cool while you can because everywhere you go in Philippines is actually quite warm. So it's a very, very refreshing time to enjoy there as well. And it looks like a place out of this world. Literally, there is so many cool spots and the way the fall goes down, there's different rock pools along the way as well. So make sure you go dip in there and take some photos. Oh, and there's also this place where you put your feet in the water and these little fishes come up and bite into your feet. They eat away on all your calluses in your feet as well. It's such a really interesting feeling and, and I really recommend you do it. It's, it's a lot of fun. And number four, we're gonna head down to Mobile for some scuba diving, which is dope fun. And let me tell you, scuba diving is one of the most fun things you can ever do. No, you don't need a license for this one. It's just a discovery dive. People that are super, super nice. Rowena, if 
you're watching this video. We love you. You are the best scuba diving instructor and we're a nice husband. Eric, I, I hope you're watching. You are absolutely fantastic. Make sure you go check out Moa Bar. Go to the scuba dive. And from there, what you're going to see is you're going to swim with them sardines, baby. And not only will you see the sardines, you will actually see a lot of sea life, which is amazing. It's teeming with life. It's very vibrant. And the visibility was fantastic as well. And I just like blowing bubble rings, man. That's just that's just what I like to do. So if you have the chance to go to Moa Bar, scuba diving is dope amounts of fun. Coming up next is Kawasan Falls. You guys don't need me to explain how wonderful that experience is. You get a awesome motorbike ride to the top, I guess, and then you go from there. You take a zipline instead of walking for 45 minutes, and it is so much fun. And that alone is a fantastic experience. And from there, you're going to start coming down these falls, which is just unreal. There is a vlog that I've done just on the Kawasan Falls experience because it was that much fun. Make sure you check out the link in the description. We'll go to my channel. Make sure to like, subscribe, ring the notification bell so that you can stay updated with all these videos. You're going to find how much fun I had in Kawasan Falls, how refreshing it was, how amazing it was, how cool it was. And it was just the perfect thing that I needed during my trip in Philippines. It's exhilarating, it's dangerous, it's fun, and it's safe. It's just everything. And there's a lot of giggles. Depending on the friends that you go with, you're gonna have lots and lots and lots of fun. And of course, there are many jumps. If jumping isn't your thing, that's okay. You can just climb down some of them as well. So don't feel too afraid. But all of these jumps, I found them to be quite safe and quite fun in general. So you're there once. So might as well just take the opportunity and just jump in the water. There's also a lot of swing jumps as well, which I thought was pretty cool. There's a few of them there too. So make sure you go and try those out. You will definitely have lots of giggles because some of them are gonna have some pretty dumb jumps. During the middle of the track is some snacking there as well. You don't have to bring the money there. You just buy or pick up whatever you want to eat and they keep tabs on what you have eaten and you will be able to pay that at the end of the trip as well, which is a pretty good system. And yes, there are literally a million spots to take photos and your tour guide is the man for the job. We had Roy when we were away and he was simply amazing. So make sure you surrender your camera to your uh, tour guide because they're going to be the ones that take photos for you. And they're very, very kind and helpful when it comes to taking photos and videos. So make sure you go nuts with all that. And last but not least, you can visit the similar shrine. It is a magnificent building and there's a lot of people there. Just make sure that you abide by some of the local cultures and rules that they have. If you're not wearing any attire that covers your knees, they will give you a piece of fabric that you can put around your waist. And it's like, you just pay like 20 pesos or something for that. And that is enough to get you in there. Have a look around. There's a lot of interesting architecture, a lot of interesting statues and lots of different stories in there. Regardless of your religions, just go and check it out. That's just how Filipinos are. And so that was definitely a very interesting time for me to witness. And it was quite a different experience to what I normally do on trips. And so it was a pretty good little break for otherwise a very, very long trip that I had. And as a bonus, on your way back to Cebu, make sure you stop at Kaka because they have one of the best lechons. Kaka is actually the birthplace of what we know as lechon. And there you're gonna have the freshest lechon there. And I kid you not, they had the deepest and the most yummy flavor there. If it's spicy, it was spicy. If it had flavor, it had really deep flavors. And while you're eating, you can even see the fresh lechon getting cooked and coming out on a spit, which I think is crazy. There's other fruits that you can pick and choose from there as well. And it is just such a wonderful break. You literally like in this busy marketplace and you're having lechon. It's very authentic, it's really hot, but the food is amazing. One of the most authentic Filipino experiences that I was able to have. And it was something that I could never, ever, ever forget. So make sure you stop by Kaka and grab yourself some lechon before you come back to your hotel in Cebu, guys. So overall, when you're in Cebu, I think the best thing to do is to grab yourself a driver who's gonna get you around all of these places in one course. We were able to do this within just literally three days. And it was super simple to just have a driver with us to take us around everywhere and they were like in a sedan for three of us was traveling together so that's totally enough to get yourself around it is lots and lots of fun they accommodate you every single step of the way we had Atesha who was really really awesome she looked after us all throughout the trip she was fantastic and of course that is the best way to spend time in Cebu except for going to Boho which we haven't done but we're doing that in the next trip so make sure you stay tuned make sure to like share subscribe and ring that notification bell so that you can stay updated with some of the best and the most amazing places that I get to visit around the world that you could only come with me vicariously through this video but hopefully you can visit there yourself very soon. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I'm out. Peace. And if you ain't no nigga, I'm popping. I'm the one nigga who been killing the pockets. Don't do it for the grand, bitch. I do.